Hey guys, what's going on? So today I want to talk about a topic that I've talked about a few times in the past as different situations have kind of come up, but it's a situation that I think we should just fully cover just because you know there's going to be instances really, I guess, popping up as time goes on, okay? Because it, it seems like every time that the media gets a chance, they take a swipe at YouTube, and there is good reason behind that. Well, at least for them, okay? To anyone else, it's not a good reason, but you know what I'm saying. So, there have been a few really good, uh, I guess, examples of the media just either manipulating or misinterpreting or purposely misleading people when it comes to subjects that surround YouTube, YouTubers, the culture on the platform and things like that. Now the two best examples I'd like to bring up are pretty much both really kind of surrounding PewDiePie, okay? Now, he is the most subscribed YouTuber, obviously, he gets pretty much the most attention. Therefore, he is going to have a target on his back when it comes to these people, but it doesn't really excuse it, okay? Now, the one that was probably the most impactful for creators here on the platform was when the Wall Street Journal, okay, basically found a racist video on YouTube and they screenshotted some ads that were being played on it because, as you know, at that time on YouTube, pretty much anything could become monetized there wasn't really an issue with demonetization the whole platform really was open for people to make money on regardless okay the uh, the, re the requirements really to even get monetization were pretty much non-existent now you have to have like 240,000 watch minutes on your channel and over a thousand subscribers just to be considered but what they did is they found this guy with like 50 subscribers who had made a racist video screenshotted like a coca-cola ad on it and then they made this big article about how YouTube was monetized racist content across the platform and basically made this big manifesto really to all of these ad companies and things like that like coca-cola all these companies that were advertising on YouTube and basically they just kind of cheap shot at YouTube okay because I think everyone at the Wall Street Journal knows exactly how YouTube's monetization system works it's impossible for YouTube to monitor literally every video on the platform even with robots and make sure that they are eligible or what whatever or that they're meeting guidelines or whatever it's just it's impossible an unfathomable amount of content is uploaded to YouTube every day okay so basically they cherry-picked an example okay came out of nowhere and made this big article that basically led to hundreds of millions of dollars of ad dollars being taken off the platform because these companies saw this article and they saw that yes their ad was played by this video okay and they you know knee-jerk reaction yanked their ads off the platform which obviously really hurt YouTube creators because less ads are being played on the platform and it hurt YouTube itself okay and just as a reaction to that YouTube has now become this dictatorship where it's actually becoming pretty hard to make money especially if you're a channel that isn't squeaky clean but why why would they do that okay well it's honestly pretty simple, okay? It's the same reason that they went after PewDiePie when his controversy, or should I say controversies, started to take off, okay? You know, PewDiePie, he is controversial, okay? I think that's fair for us all to agree on. Sometimes his word selection isn't the best. Sometimes his jokes are a little bit politically incorrect. And as a result, these quote-unquote respected news organizations would basically blow them out of proportion, purposely misrepresent the intention of the video. That way, they could garner some clicks and, at the same time, hurt the reputation of YouTube to people like boomers and generally people who don't use YouTube and don't understand it, okay? Because let's be honest, boomers and older people, they're not watching YouTube like millennials and Gen Z and younger people are, okay? Those are the people who are still gonna sit down and watch CNN, Fox, MSNBC, things like that to get their news. YouTube and, well, for the most part, technology like computers and stuff, that's something that a lot of older people just simply aren't interested in. But millennials, hey, we grew up with the stuff, you know what I'm saying? We, we grew up internet kids. And we realize that not only can you get the same entertainment value, if not more entertainment value out of YouTube than you can regular TV or the mainstream media, but you can get even better quality news with less bias on YouTube than you can with the mainstream media. So these people realize, hey, 
YouTube is getting way too much attention for our own good. Independent news networks on YouTube are sometimes getting more viewership than what we're getting as a global super conglomerate news network. Obviously, that's not good for their business. So what are they going to do? to the to the place that's you know inevitably going to replace television altogether and what are they going to do when they see a controversy like PewDiePie saying the n-word or anything kind of arise on the platform they're going to attack okay they're going to do what they can to make sure that people are hating YouTube because it's in their best interest why would they want to compete with YouTube they can't compete with YouTube as a matter of fact I'm gonna show you a graph this is the Google Trends that I searched okay I used five search terms okay I used YouTube CNN Fox News the Washington Post and the New York Times Four of those are some of the largest news networks in the United States one of them is obviously YouTube okay which one do you think easily rises above the rest yeah YouTube destroys these platforms, not even close. As a matter of fact, interest over time for YouTube, on average, is five times higher than the next competitive news network, CNN. And it's been that way for a long time. As a matter of fact, YouTube has been more popular than CNN, Fox News, Washington Post, New York Times since August of 2006. For 13 years now, okay, YouTube has been completely dominating these people, has been completely replacing their networks on TV, is replacing their articles on the internet. People aren't going to go pay for a subscription to the New York Times when they can get the same thing for free on YouTube from a source that is not biased, from a source that has no ulterior motive, from a source that they feel they can trust. Okay, and that's what inevitably is going to bring the mainstream media down. They're simply not trustworthy, regardless of political lines, regardless of what party that they typically favor. Pretty much all of the mainstream media is going to twist articles, that way they can get people clicking on them, that way they can feed people propaganda, and that way they can divide people further. You don't have to worry about that with a lot of independent YouTube creators, okay? You don't have to worry about me coming out and talking about something tomorrow and trying to feed you propaganda that this par this political party's bad. And I have no reason to do that, okay? So, but of course the mainstream media loves to pretend that they have no ulterior motive against YouTube. They've never attacked YouTube in their eyes. They think that everything they report is facts, but obviously to anyone who understands YouTube at all and reads these articles, we realize that all this really is is them pandering to their mainstream audience without actually researching anything on the platform they they don't look for the facts when something about pewdiepie comes up all they do is they see someone called him racist okay and then they take off with that they they don't actually you know research to see what people actually think about it and if they do they magically almost every single time when it comes down to them reporting on something on youtube they somehow just magically misinterpret everything that happens on the platform. They magically spin the story into their favor, and it always magically ends up harming YouTube as a platform because the leadership at YouTube has no idea how to handle the situation. So for people with obviously a pretty good motive, you know, the survival of their company and their ability to compete in the new age, the mainstream media that is playing innocent throughout this whole thing sure does seem to mess it up almost, you know, every single time. And thankfully, the YouTube community, and I guess really the internet community in general, has kind of caught on to this, and they've gained a reputation for calling out the mainstream media, okay? The internet will flame the media when necessary. And it's good that the internet keeps these people on their toes, okay? It's good that we actually end up defending the platform, because if the media had it their way, they would have already have taken YouTube over 15 years ago okay before it even became a competitor but they simply can't they can't take over youtube because people just don't trust them and they've already gained a pretty bad reputation with the youtube community i'd say with the last 800 articles they've written about the platform being negative in some way so the truth behind why it seems like every time something happens on youtube the mainstream media automatically just puts out a wave of articles denouncing YouTube as a platform for allowing somebody who might break the mold or be a little bit different every time that something happens okay they put out all of this just hate really misguided information meant to deceive the people reading into thinking YouTube is a big bad scary racist dark platform full of people who just don't care it's because YouTube is replacing them YouTube and the people on YouTube are consistently getting as many if not more views 
than many TV networks are, and it comes down just simply to that, okay? The mainstream media is often filled with people who also don't really understand YouTube that well, and since, well, it's something they've gotta write about, okay? They generally are just gonna put out these misled articles, okay, filled with just bias upon bias, okay? And it's harmful, but thankfully the internet community sees through this, okay? It's simple, okay? In the newer generations, you're, you're gonna have people sit down and watch hours of YouTube. They might watch Philip DeFranco or someone along those lines. I don't really know many news channels on YouTube, okay? But they'll watch hours of YouTube content. But are younger generations paying for cable and watching hours of television? No, they're not. The newer generations are all about the streaming services and free online platforms like YouTube, Twitch, of course, Netflix and Hulu are more paid, but you know, that that's what they're about. They're, they're not about paying exorbitant costs for cable to have some, you know, boomer idiot on TV tell them that they're wrong for believing this, okay? They, they don't have to worry about that online. And that's the beauty of YouTube, and that's why the mainstream media is being phased out slowly, and that's why they're just simply not trusted. Hopefully Hopefully that answered your question guys, thank you for watching, if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're brand new around here on my channel, follow me on Twitter at sub to optimus I post memes, thoughts, and updates over there, join the discord down below, lots of great things happening down there, thank you to my channel members for your $5 a month, your support helps my channel tremendously, and until my next video guys, this is Optimus, writing hit pieces on YouTube, and signing out.